I have had my MacBook Pro for just about six months now, and let me tell you how much I appreciate this thing and get into why I really needed this thing and why it is still my favorite piece of tech six months later. My name is Joseph Lipson. I'm a content creator based out of Seattle, Washington. And I like to make tech videos and make filmmaking videos and kind of put them together. So if you're into the same thing as me, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button so you can follow along on this journey. So I'm gonna touch on in this video, three things that I've really grown to love about this MacBook Pro in the six months that I've had it. So this is a 16 inch MacBook Pro M1 Max and inside of this body it has a 10 core CPU, a 32 core GPU and four terabytes of internal storage. So the first thing I wanna touch on is Apple Silicone and that's the main reason why I upgraded to this device was because of Apple Silicone and the M1 chip and now the M2 chip. So first let's talk speed. This computer is so fast and the M1 chip is built so you don't really have to upgrade over time. What we saw with the Intel chip was year in, year out, the improvements would be significant and would kind of make you have to upgrade after a couple of years. But from the M1 Max to the M2 Max, I mean, I've played with both and I haven't really seen a difference. I mean, even with this M1 Max, I've not been able to reach even the capabilities that this chip has to offer. For me, the big thing was utilizing it for video editing. And I used Premiere Pro the first three months I had this, and the M1 chip isn't utilized and built for Premiere Pro. And ultimately, it's why I moved to DaVinci Resolve. And one thing I've noticed with DaVinci Resolve that it's able to handle is I'm able to do intense color grades on this thing with zero lag. I'm able to drop in 4K footage if it's at 24 frames, if it's at 60, if it's at 120. Whatever it is, I'm able to drop that in there and scrub through with really no issues. But also with that, I'm able to scrub through a timeline with heavy graphics, heavy text, all those things. And it doesn't slow down my process with scrubbing and the issues I would have while running it in Premiere Pro. So that's the first thing. And then with this, I've never felt the computer actually heat up. Previously with my Intel Macs, I mean, heating would be a big issue that I'd run into with these MacBooks. And it was always something that became an issue when I'd be editing on my lap and I'd feel the thing literally burning me. But I have not heard the fans kick on here. I've made 15 minute, I've made 20 minute videos on here. I've made high intensity videos on here with color grades, graphics, just all those things, learning even DaVinci Resolve and Fusion. And I've had zero issues with the fan. One thing I wanna to touch on when I'm talking about this is the power in this is a tool. It's not gonna make you better at whatever you do, but it's a tool to make what you do more seamless. It's a tool to make whatever you do more streamlined. And that's really what I found it for as it hasn't made me a better editor or it hasn't made me a better person in Photoshop. It's just made the process faster. It's made efficiency something that I really focus on now. Even this M1 Max is completely overkill. I've never ran into a reason where I've needed everything that this chip has to offer. What are some reasons you might need a chip of this capacity or like an M1 Ultra? It's simply like if you're doing 3D rendering and you need to render in real time, things like that. That's where the M1 Max, the M1 Ultra, the M2 chips really come in handy and you see them using their full capability. And then we'll talk about the upgrades. I kind of talked about it earlier, but as you move into the Apple Silicone ecosystem, the jump from M1 to M1 Pro and M1 Max was pretty big. But from there, the jump from M1 to M2 was not that big. The jump from M1 Pro to M2 Pro, M1 Max to M2 Max, it was not significantly that big. And for that, it means you don't have to upgrade year in, year out. And this device that you're spending, like in my case, six grand on, is going to help you throughout the years and you don't have to worry of upgrading becoming a thing. And then finally, for like an everyday user, I talked about this thing as like a content creator, but for an everyday user, like you'll get away with the M1 or the M2. Like the speed in and out of apps with this thing is unbelievable. Your day to day on this thing, emailing, all those things, I mean, it works fast. It works like you'd expect a MacBook to work. And that's not really what the chip's utilized for, but it's nice to know you have that power in there if you ever do wanna 
do something in the creative field or like the coding field that would involve a lot of the horsepower in this computer. Next up, let's talk about the aesthetic of this computer. And I mean, we're at the time where it finally happened. We had these Macs that the goal was to get them as skinny as possible. And it's a thick MacBook now. And we have a big trackpad. We have USB-C's on this thing. We finally have the SD card reader available in this computer, which is, I mean, for someone who uses an SD card, like, Thank you, Apple. Uh, HDMI is back in this thing. And I mean, sometimes you just have to take thin and substitute it for productivity. And that's ultimately what they did. And I'm a big fan of it. We have the updated speakers, which work very nice with this thing. The big track pack, like I talked about, and this new look keyboard, which ultimately a great touch. I mean, it's a heavy, heavy MacBook but they made it feel premium. They made it feel like it is a computer that you spent a lot of money on and it just feels like an overall nicer product than the last one. Next up, let's talk about the screen. So as I turn this around and you can see a little bit on here, you'll see it in B-roll, but the screen on this thing is unbelievable. The amount of nits of brightness it gets to in the pure daylight, being able to work outside at a park in a sunny day is great but the 120 hertz refresh rate brings it back together with all of those pro devices. That's what you really get with this uh, liquid retina display is just like the quality of life in the screen. And as someone who edits video as a living, important to have high resolution, high nit of brightness and 120 hertz refresh rate of a screen. So a nice screen is always a plus. That's my biggest issue on why it's hard for me to upgrade to the Apple Studio display is simply because it is 60 hertz and I'm putting my 120 hertz screen into a 60 hertz. And it's just hard to justify doing that when you have such a screen of this magnitude. Let's talk about the notch. The notch is noticeable. It's kind of like the same effect that the notch had in the iPhone before they went with the dynamic island where it's noticeable. But after you get used to it, it's just the screen and it's just there and you don't really notice it. So that's something that's nice that it wasn't really a distraction. It wasn't something I had to get used to. I kind of just blended into my mind and was another piece of the MacBook. And then finally, this is the 16 inch. I was back and forth the entire time on the 16 and 14 inch and ultimately went with the 16 inch because in your mind with buying things, I've never been like, oh, I want a smaller screen. It's always been, oh, I want a bigger screen. So that's the reason I got the 16 inch. And I have mixed feelings about it. Editing a lot from my desk, the 16 inch is real nice because of how big the screen is. And even in a coffee shop, all those things. But like transporting this thing on a plane, it takes up your entire seat and some. Like it is huge on a plane. It's hard to travel with. It fits in very few backpacks. You can't fit in a backpack with a case. So if I were to do this again, I'd probably get the 14 inch MacBook Pro just so I had something a little bit more portable because I am going around with this thing a lot more than I thought and throwing it in a backpack a lot more than I thought. So that's kind of my only regret with this computer is going with the 14 inch, but I had two big decisions when buying this. It was 14 inch or 16 inch and then how much uh, SSD internal storage I would get. And I ultimately got four terabytes, which is plenty. I've made well over like 25, 30 videos on this computer and I'm only at a terabyte. So that's nice being able to have the internal storage this computer has. So overall, do you need an M1 Max or an M2 Max? The answer is no. This computer and the power in this computer is overkill. Even as a content creator like myself, I have not been able to reach the power this thing really has to offer. I could have gone with the M1 Pro or the M2 Pro and gotten everything I needed out of it and maybe even the M1 or the M2. But with that being said, my only advice is if you have an Intel Mac, make sure you soon switch over to the Apple Silicon ecosystem if it is an M1 or an M2. I mean, the only computer left that has an Intel chip is the Mac Studio and people spent upwards of 35 to 50 grand on those and they're not anything close to as powerful as the base model M2 or M1, which goes to show how powerful the Apple silicone chip really is. That's it. I love this laptop. After six months, I would do it all over again. I would spend the six grand on this thing to spec it out the way I did. And I mean, it makes my job a lot more streamlined. It doesn't make it easier. It makes it streamlined and it's a nice tool 
for efficiency in my workflow and that's ultimately why I love it. But with that being said, thanks for tuning in. Make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next one.